In the second half of the lecture, we'll continue our journey of mining data streams. And specifically, we'll talk about three more algorithms. The first one is the famous Bloomfield filters for filtering a data stream. So basically the goal of this algorithm is to select elements with some property X from the stream. The second algorithm we'll talk about is the Frederick Martin algorithm for counting distinct elements. And specifically the goal is to count the number or estimate the number of distinct elements in the last K elements of the stream. The third algorithm is the AMF method for estimating moments. So, and specifically in here, we'll talk about how to estimate the standard deviation of the last K elements. So now let's start with the first problem of filtering data streams. Um, the problem setting here is that each element of the data stream is a tuple, as we, uh, as always, and we're given a list of keys S, and we try to, uh, basically we'll try to uh, add, determine which tuples of the stream are inside S. So whether it's a new tuple or it's an old tuple. And one obvious solution, of course, is to use hash table. But let's suppose we do not actually have enough memory to store all of the S in a hash table. For example, it might be processing millions of filters on, on the same stream. So therefore, it's, we cannot afford to store all the, all the elements of the S. How should we do this? And one example application of this problem is the email spam filtering. For example, uh, let's say there were no 1 billion good email addresses. And if an email comes from one of these, then it's not a spam. So this is one example. Another example application is the publish subscribe system. Let's say that you are collecting lots of messages. So this is like a, a stream of news article. This is a data stream. And let's say that people already express their interest in certain sets as of keywords. Then we want to determine whether each message from the stream matches the user's interest. Now, this is another application of the uh, of the filtering algorithm that we'll talk about. Right. Um, of course, one idea uh, to do this is to use a hash function, not a hash table, but a hash function. Uh, let's say that we're given a set of keys S and I want to filter the elements to see if the element is uh, inside the S or, or not. And basically, we can first create a bit array B of n bits. So initially, we will set all the bits in the array to B. And we'll choose a hash function H with the range of uh, 0 to n. And before processing the element coming from the string, we'll first hash each member S that belongs to this set capital S to one of the n buckets. So basically we'll hash it and we'll set the corresponding bit to one. And formally we can see that we're actually setting uh, the H S entry of the bit array T1. And after doing this, then for each new element coming from the string, we can hash this element A and output it only if it hashes to bit one. So basically we will output this, we'll output A only if H A element of this bit array is already set to one. And otherwise we'll just, we'll just drop this element, we'll just discard it. And more concretely, let's say that we already have a uh, hash, the, the, S, uh, the set S into a bit array. And let's say that we have uh, a new item coming from the stream. Let's say it's, it's item, I, uh, item one. And we will first use this item one and we'll hash it to the hash function H. And specifically, we'll, in this case, we'll hash it to a bit zero. And since it hashes to a bucket that's set to zero, but it's surely it's not in S, right? Otherwise, otherwise this bit would have been one. 
Therefore, we can drop this item. So we, we do not output this item. And that's the day we have a new item, item two here. And we'll go through the hash function and the hash function hash it to a bucket that's, uh, that's set to one. So therefore, we can see that at least one of the items in the set S is already hashed the same bucket, right? Therefore, therefore we can have a one here. So this is, what this, what this means is that this item may be in S. Therefore, we can output this item. One thing to know is that this algorithm can actually create false positive, but it will not create false negatives. So basically, we will have a 100% recall. Why is this? Uh, this is because if the item is in S, then the corresponding hashed bit would definitely be set to one. Therefore, when it comes from the string, we will surely hash the item to a bit one and we will, we will certainly output this item. Right? So therefore we, we have no false negative. We have 100% one, uh, recall. On the other hand, if the item is not in S, even so, we can, we can still hash this item to uh, we can still hash this item to to a bit one right because the the hash function is kind of a, a random uh, with regard to the item therefore we can still have some false positives as a more concrete example let's say that we have one billion email addresses and we have one uh, we have 8 billion bits in the bit array. So let's say that if the email address is in the set S, then it surely hashes to a bucket that has the bit set to 1, right? So it always it's going to always get through. So we have no false negative. We have 100% recall. And however, we have approximately uh, 1, 1 over 8 of the bits that are set to one. This is because we have 1 billion email addresses and we have 8 billion bits, right? So basically one, one in every eight uh, bits will be set to one. Therefore, about one eighth, one eighth of the addresses not in S will, will still get through to the output, right? So this means we're gonna still have some false positive. But actually, if you analyze it more carefully, you can you can actually find that it's a little bit less than one eighth because more than one address might hash to the same bit, 